Joining us from Denver, Colorado, Aaron Cole, senior editor at thedrive.com to look at the future of electric vehicles. Good to see you, uh, Aaron. You know, this industry, it, it, you would think it'd be very simple. It's electric cars. Everyone seems to like them. There's not a lot of controversy, but it is controversial in, in many ways because a lot of people who love the old-style gasoline cars, they really do love them. How are you going to get them to, to buy electric vehicles and say, we're all in? Uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right, Phil. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate you uh, uh, this evening. Uh, you know, you make a great point. And I think um, the, the appeal of electric cars is twofold. Uh, number one is a desirable product, but also um, charging infrastructure. And I think you're seeing that with EV adoption rates um, across the U.S. Uh, the, the states that are adopting EVs typically are on the coasts, uh, California, Florida, um, and those are the places where there's infrastructure available to charge those EVs. Right. Um, and automakers such as Ford and GM have gone with a two-headed approach um, while they're offering products that people maybe want. Uh, and I'm thinking, I'm talking Hummer EV, uh, Mustang Mach-E, um, those are desirable products. Uh, at the same time, they're also rolling out charging plans to help customers or entice customers to adopt those EVs and charge them confidently uh, when they're out on the road and are out on the road and, and right, right, and, and, um, and, and that infrastructure leads me to a friend of mine who purchased a Tesla X for their family, and we can we're not allowed to go on vacations together because he will not drive that thing anywhere more than like 10 miles because he says that his <laughs> wife is going to have a heart attack that they're going to run out of electricity somewhere on the middle of the freeway. So we call that range anxiety, but to your point of building this infrastructure out, how long is it gonna take? Because we have been talking about this for many, many years. Well, I mean, that's, that's, a, great, uh, that's a great point, Phil. Um, I, Tesla was first in the water uh, with their supercharger infrastructure, and that is paid out um, in spades for them. That, I mean, they've done extremely well for that, and uh, they've you know, placed it on interstates, popular travel routes. Um, but I think as you as you see traditional automakers jump into the EV market and scale up their production, um, as we've seen GM and Ford and other automakers, I think you'll see a significant investment and a rapid um, increase in uh, EV infrastructure to accommodate those chargers. And you know, I, the, the the tipping point is 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 going to be when that shows up in flyover country. Um, when it's right. not on the coasts, when it's when it's in the heartland, and um, look, look, I'll be I'll be honest. On the way, I'm interested in electric cars. I will buy one. And one of the sticking points is that it is extremely expensive. It is not; these aren't budget cars. These are very expensive premium cars that you you have to purchase, and you know maybe the maintenance is a little bit better, but they're expensive. It's an expensive down payment, and we've been told that prices would be coming down. Right, the last six, seven years since Tesla began this whole this whole movement. And honestly, the last couple of years, we've seen nothing but the price actually go up. That's true. Um, I think that there's a, a there's a traditional automaker mentality of a halo vehicle where um, the expensive vehicle becomes a, a reach object for people and they see them on the road. Uh, case in point is the Hummer EV. Um, that's a 9,000 pound truck. Um, that is desirable, that people are going to look at, they're going to spot at, or they're going to spot on the roads, and they're going to say, hey, that, that looks really cool. Maybe I could get into something like that. And whether they can afford something like that is up, is, is, is up to them. But it really um, creates a, a brand perception. And uh, the affordability aspect is um, either supplemented by EV incentives, um, which Congress is currently talking about, or it's um, on the automakers. And the traditional tipping point is uh, $100 per kilowatt hour of battery capacity, right, right. which EV makers are getting very close to. And, and GM has hinted with his Ultium batteries yeah. that they're almost on top of. Aaron, we talk a, a lot about supply chain issues here. And obviously, uh, EVs use a ton of little chips and wires and everything in there. Just very quickly, have we solved most of the problem yet on supply chain? Uh, that's a great question, and that's a million-dollar question or a billion-dollar question. Um, right now, uh, as you know, Congress passed a bill uh, last month 
to uh, juice the CHIPS Act, which was, uh, uh, I think, 50 billion plus. Uh, Europe did something similar, which is 40 billion plus. Um, and so right now they're trying to address the shortage as much as possible. Um, it's a mixed bag as far as automakers have reported. Some have said right. that the worst may be over. Um, some have said that the ship ship shortage may last okay. until 2023. I'm, get, um, I'm getting yelled can, at by my producer. Um, just very quickly, give me two cars that the control room and myself can look at that you think is cool that's coming up in the next six months. <laughs> well, in the next six months, uh, it's 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 tough to point at, but I would say, um, boy, uh, you know, I, uh, Dodge has some interesting things coming uh, across the line here in August with Speed Week and traditional muscle cars that could really juice enthusiasm. Um, and GM is right. really working hard at getting an affordable EV on the road. Aaron, and I would expect that they'll do it soon. We got to leave it there. Uh, fantastic having you on. Thank you.